All right, let's talk a little bit about phantom mode. Don't confuse this with phantom power. Phantom power is what you apply at the input stage to power up a microphone that requires juice. But phantom mode occurs in the cross point of the system. When you are setting up your auto mixer, in the electrosonics mixers, the matrixing mixers, you have to understand that every output is an independent auto mixer. What happens on output one in auto mixing is completely unrelated to and has no effect on your auto mixing going on in output two. And we'll show you some screens that Frankie will add to this uh, uh, video to uh, show you what we're talking about. But if you have, for example, inputs, if you're setting up cross points, let's say we have a four by four matrix here. This is like our little screen in our uh, setup routine. So these are input one, two, three, and four, and this is outputs one, two, three, and four. And if we activate output one, two, three, and four to output one, these four microphones will interact with each other in the Automix algorithm to output one. If I set up output two, so it's one, three, and four, output three, so it's one, two, and four, and then one, two, and three, where we've turned off microphones, what happens now is on output two, if we get activity on microphone two, it's going to affect the gain of the other mics in output one, but because it's not part of the mix going to output two, it will have no effect on the level of microphone one on output two. I'll repeat that. If someone talks on microphone two, at output one, it will affect the levels of one, three, and four in the auto mixing. But because it's not being mixed into output two, it will not affect microphone one, three, and four. Over here on output three, activity on three will not affect these channels. If I take microphone two out of the mix to output three, again, someone talking here, microphone two will affect the levels on one and four, but have no effect on two and three. Each output is a completely different and independent auto mixer. This is really powerful. There's a lot you can do with that. But there's a, something that can happen here. In a courtroom, for example, let's say output four happens to be the recording track for the judge's microphone. So we are only going to put the judge, microphone one, onto output four. We only want to record just his microphone to that output. But let's examine real quickly what happens in the room itself if you do it this way. You have a judge's bench. And we're looking at it from the back side. So this is the judge's bench. And he sits in the middle here, okay? And so he's in a chair that, that lets him sit and listen to what's going on, and he's got a shelf there. He's got speakers in the judge's bench that let him hear what the other microphones are doing. And he has a microphone. The judge's mic is not amplified to the local speakers. Next to the judge is the witness bench, and it has a microphone, and it's a mix minus. So when the jury or the witness speaks, this person talks, it gets amplified in the judge's speaker and the judge can hear what's going on. We're recording the judge's microphone only to output four. We only want to hear what the judge has to say. But the microphone is by itself. And in our automix algorithm, that means the judge is on all the time. So there's there's no auto mixing. There's no other microphones to interact with, therefore the judge is on all the time. So what happens when someone speaks in the witness box? The witness sits there and he talks and his voice goes down to that speaker and that gets picked up by the judge's microphone. And that microphone, because it's all by itself, it's on all the time. So what happens? We get the witness voice being picked up by the judge's mic and recorded to the judge's track. We don't want that to happen. So how do we keep the witness out of the judge's mic? That's where phantom mode comes in. A phantom mode 
is where you set up where you select as your auto mixing mode and it's indicated in our system by a little square in the middle of the thing when you set it up. If you enable these cross points in phantom mode, what happens is microphone two, three, and four are now part of the auto mix algorithm in all respects except they don't put any audio on the track. But their activities both contribute to and react to the Automix algorithm. So if this happens to be the witness microphone here and the witness speaks, what happens is now the witness microphone comes in and is amplified in that speaker. It's picked up by the judge's mic, but because of auto skewing, the auto mixer says, no, I already have that signal here at the witness mic, even though you can't hear it, the, mo the auto mixer knows it's there, and it doesn't open the judge's mic. So now you have basically the judge's mic is on, but it's not going to turn on for a signal picked up by other microphones within the system. Phantom mode means that it's part of the auto mix algorithm, but does not contribute audio. It still contributes all the other auto mix functions. So in these other examples here, output two where input to witness is not going to the, uh, let's say output two is the witness speaker. Well, we can prevent that feedback loop again by putting this into phantom mode. In fact, my recommendation is when you're doing mix minus systems, instead of turning off cross points, turn them on, zero dB gain, enabled, and in phantom mode. So you get that little square in the center. By activating phantom mode, you end up with a much more stable system by taking advantage of not only continuous gain modulation, but auto skewing. And that helps your entire mix minus system improve. You're going